does everybody have a Merry Christmas? Yes. You all get presents? Presents? Did you get what you wanted? Did anybody get clothes? Are you wearing those new clothes today? There it is. Very nice. Um, I got some new clothes, but I also got a gift card. And I went to uh, use my gift card. It was a sale. I bought all kinds of stuff, including this Argyle sweater I had on this morning. If you were here early enough to see it, maybe you'll see it after worship. It's really worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wore it because I was cold. But um, I got a lot of compliments on it. And um, uh, Joan Vitelli came up to me and said, Well, if you got it, you got it. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny because I don't, I don't usually got it. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, the clothes we wear are very important. Very important, the clothes we wear, because they, they tell others about us. I see Chad wearing a nice pinkish shirt this morning. It says something about you that you're not afraid to wear pink. I'm not even sure about that. It says a lot about who we are. Um, so you just look at what I'm wearing today. And, uh, it says a lot about who I am. Uh, so you start with the, the collar. Why do I wear the collar? Uh, a couple of reasons, actually. I wear the collar. Uh, I don't think there's a theological reason to wear it. Yeah. Uh, but there's a tradition of people who have worn it before me. And it kind of lets people know who I am. Uh, but at the same time, there's not, I think I may be the only pastor in Southlake that wears a collar, except for maybe a Catholic church. When, when I go to the pastor meetings, I'm the only one with one on, and um, I kind of like that. I like uh, being different. Um, and then the other reason is it, it's real easy on Sunday morning to get up. I don't have to think about what am I going to wear today. <laughs> uh, but my favorite part is when we go to lunch after church and I hold Michelle's hand, and people see me wearing the collar holding a woman's hand, and Because <laughs> uh, I guess they don't know Lutherans uh, or collars. So, uh, that's funny. Uh, I don't know if I'll always wear a collar, but for now it works, so I wear the collar. Um, the stole, I wear the stole as a, uh, when I was ordained, I was given a, a stole at that time. And basically what it says is that I'm yoked to Jesus. Uh, we are like two donkeys pulling a cart, and uh, we are yoked together, so that's what the stole is, so, so I wear the stole. The cross, um, I wear the cross for a couple reasons. Some people say only bishops should wear a cross. Um, let's see what I think about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I wear a cross to remember my baptism. You know, the, the cross was placed on my forehead. Uh, I wear a cross because it reminds me to preach the cross at all times. Uh, but I wear this cross specifically today because this was made by my father in law, Bill. And as many of you know, he's not here today. He um, had open heart surgery. Eight, eight or nine days ago, emergency uh, bypass surgery. He's doing well, thank you for all your prayers. He's home, we went and saw him yesterday, and he's, uh, he's home and doing well, and getting up and uh, getting back to life. Uh, so, uh, but since he's not here today, I felt that you know this would be the right cross to wear. Uh, so I think that says a lot about, what I'm wearing today says a lot about who, who I am. Uh, but um, I also have the stamp on my hand. It says uh, SAT, stands for Saturday. And, and what we wear says more sometimes about who we are, what we believe. Uh, it stands for Saturday, I went to the gun show yesterday um, in Fort Worth. And, uh, and I got rid of my handgun. Um, I don't feel like uh, the government needs to tell me what, what I can and cannot have. But, but for me, after this recent tragedy and uh, the violence all around us, I just I just felt called to, to give it up. Uh, I just felt called to, to I, I don't need it. If I'm going to have your children in my house, it doesn't need, doesn't need to be a handgun there. Um, it was a hard decision because I really enjoy it, but um, this so says something about what I believe. And it's interesting, on the way there, as we're going to the party, he's like, well, you know, I really don't think you should do this. You should be ready for whatever's coming. And I said, well, whenever it comes, I'll be here wearing this. That's what I need. And 
if I have to worry about anything, we'll have Mark Saunders get the reader that day. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, Jesus didn't carry a sword, but Peter did. So, but, uh, so what we wear... <laughs> what we wear says a lot about who we are, but also says a lot about what we believe. But, but more so than the clothes we wear, we wear our emotions and our feelings uh, in, our, in ourself, in our face, when we're, uh, when we're just out in public. Uh, yesterday, uh, you ever just have a terrible day? Everything goes wrong. I had one of those days yesterday. Uh, got up, and we, we took in Michelle's Durango to get an oil change and a tune-up and an inspection on Thursday. We dropped it off the dealership. And we said, okay, we, this is what we want. We said, so we've done it in a few hours. I said, we'll have it tomorrow. I said, okay. So tomorrow was Friday. Tomorrow morning, well, maybe tomorrow afternoon. I said, well, we won't be in town tomorrow afternoon. We wouldn't visit her father in East Texas. Um, so Saturday morning, then. Okay, Saturday morning. So I came, went and picked it up yesterday. It's been at the dealership for two days. We took it in and didn't have any problems. So it's right there, you know, paid. First of all, I go in to pay, they overcharge me about like 60 bucks. I, you know, I used to work for Chrysler as a district manager. I know everything about dealerships. And I'm like, you overcharged me. And, oh, well, the person who fixed that is not here today. Said, okay, whatever. So after 20 minutes of talking, I'm like, well, we're just going to go and I'll come back. And uh, get out there and we're going to start. Oh, um, I forgot to tell you, you're probably going to need a new battery. Um, the battery was okay when we got here. Yeah, well, there's something wrong with it, but probably still under warranty. So um, so we take it back to Walmart, and Michelle uh, gets a new battery. She gets new tires, and uh, so she's there getting her car fixed. I'm off getting rid of my handgun, and then we meet back at the house, and we're going to visit Bill, who's just out of the hospital. And, uh, you know, after spending, I don't know, 1100 bucks in the car yesterday, we get out there, we get in it, we're a mile away from home, and the check engine light comes on. <laughs> and we're like, no, we'll just keep driving it. And so we drive another couple miles, another 10 minutes, and eh, we should go change cars. So we go back and change cars, and we got to run some errands. Um, and so we change cars, and we need to go to the bank. Get to the bank at 115, and the bank closed at 1. <laughs> and if if we hadn't gone back home, it would have been open, you know? And then we need to run another and get to this place by two. Another fantasy football league, Dave's here, he won, Dave, and we're going to get the thing engraved. And, you know, it's really one of those bittersweet things, and uh, uh, got to get it to Dave. And uh, get there, and it's play, it was supposed to be open until two. Uh, there's a sign, oh, we're on vacation for two weeks. So, Dave, you're not going to get, you, I'll give you the trophy, you go get engraved up. <laughs> It's just one of those days, you know, so like everything was just happening at the same time, and, um, and I was just frustrated. You ever just get frustrated? And, and I'm like, I need to go to McDonald's. So um, and we went to the drive-thru, and the little bit young guy goes, how you doing? I go, terrible, how are you? I just started laughing. I recommend it. If you ever go to McDonald's and ask how you're doing, say terrible, because they don't know how to respond. Um, but then I started laughing at myself, because I was just, but we finally get the bills, and we get there, and he looks at us and goes, wow, looks like you two are having a bad day. And you know, you can just project your bad day on people. You can wear a bad day, and people can, it doesn't matter what clothes you have on, when you walk in, people can see you're having a bad day. Um, I went and saw Jim Fox on uh, Friday, Thursday. Many of you know Jim. Uh, he usually sits right there. He uh, went in uh, and diagnosed with melanoma. Went in to have it removed. They opened him up. They closed him right back up. It's spread. All of them. Kind of puts my bad day in perspective, doesn't it? Uh, You can see worry on his face. You can see anxiety come over him and Shirley. People can see that. Doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing, we project how we're feeling, what we're thinking. The text today tells us to clothe ourselves in humility and kindness and love and impatience. But I think the two that I struggle with the most are patience and humility. 
I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy most of the time. But I struggle with patience, and I struggle with humility. There was a, a couple years ago, I was working at Ohio State. I was working at the Lutheran Campus Ministry there. We had worship on Sunday nights, and um, after worship, I got in my car. I was driving back to the seminary, and I was uh, coming into it. It was go down 13th and make a ride, I think, on to High Street, maybe. Um, I don't know. That, that's a guess. Make a right. And I, and I make a right, and the cop gets right behind me and pulls, over, pulls me over. And I said, what did I do wrong? And he said, well, you didn't stop at the stop sign when you turned right. I said, well, there wasn't a stop sign there. He goes, no, there's a stop sign there. I said, no, there wasn't. He goes, no, there is. And I said, well, no, there wasn't. Maybe they took it down. He goes, no, there's a stop sign there. I went, no, I'm, I, I, trust me, there, there isn't. And we went back and forth, and, uh, and he goes, well, I'm writing you a ticket for not stopping at a stop sign. And I said, well, I'm going to go take a picture of the stop sign that's not there. And he said, well, don't you always stop at an intersection even if there's not a stop sign? Said, no. Do you? <laughs> no. And so I went back, and I said, I'm going to take a picture of the stop sign that wasn't there. And so I went back, and I realized that there wasn't a stop sign there. There was a one-way sign, and I was going the wrong way. <laughs> Sometimes when you're right, you're still wrong. <laughs> um, and I think, I think humility is understanding that even though you're right, it's okay not to win the argument. Uh, and I've sensed that recently. Uh, Christians get very proud of Christians. And they, they want the world to, to, to honor Christmas for what it is, the birth of Jesus. And they're so militant about it sometimes. Uh, keep Christ in Christmas, and, and it's just this, it's the right thing to say. It is absolutely the right thing to say. But I don't know if we're saying it the right way. Have we, has anybody ever seen a sign that said, you know, keep Christ in Christmas and thought, you know, I should go to church. You know, you know what that sign says? Is this is our holiday. We're sharing it with you. Don't screw it up for us. Um, I think we can find a, a better way to say that. I think we can find a more humble way to say that. Like maybe Christmas is a beautiful thing. The story behind it is a beautiful thing. And what God did for our world is a beautiful thing. And we pray as a church that everybody who celebrates Christmas feels that grace and that joy that we do. That's all we need to say. We don't need to jam Christ down people's throats. Humility, patience. I heard Paul Harrington say yesterday, crack me up. He said, I've got two speeds. And if you don't like the one I'm going at now, you're really not going to like the other one. <laughs> Have you ever met people like that? It just, I think in, in human interactions, relationships, the one thing, the one gift we can give one another is patience. Not, not expecting people to be something that they're not. Not expecting them to do something at a speed which they can't do. Just allowing them to be themselves. Patience. But like I said, I, I struggle with humility and I struggle with patience. Which is why I think the one thing we need to clothe ourselves with is Jesus. We need when people to see us. When people see me, I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see the forgiveness I can give. I want them to see the grace that I can give. I want them to see the gift that I've been given in my baptism. When that cross was put on my forehead, I want them to see that because once you got it, you got it for the rest of your life and for all eternity. If we can do anything in 2013, let's show the world Jesus. Because now more than ever, the world needs to see him. Amen.